Hello everyone, this is Lily with UBOT Studio and today we're going to be talking about lists and how to use lists in UBOT 4. A list is basically just what it sounds like. Imagine a grocery list or a list of your friends on Facebook. Lists are designed to keep track of large amounts of related information from a group of usernames to a series of zip codes. UBOT temporarily holds this data in its memory so that it can recall it quickly and easily and move from one place in the list to the next. Here's how lists work and how you'll use them. The commands for inter interacting with lists are the add list to list command, the add item to list command, the remove from list command, the set list position command, and the clear list command. Let's start with the add list to list command. This command would come in handy when you're adding the contents of a file into a list in UBOT with the intention of filling some field with the list items. You can also use this command to fill a list with items you're scraping from a page. So it's not limited to filling a list with a file on your desktop. Simply drag the command into the script when you're ready to use it. And notice that two areas appear, the starting list area and then the area below list to add. The area below starting list is just the place where you will insert the list you want to populate. So in this case, you can either type in the name of a list or you can go under here and select a list that's already created and ready to go. Let's create one. Let's call it list and that's it. Under this area, this is where your contents will go. So if you're trying to grab a file from your desktop and fill this list here with the contents of that file, the list from file function would go here. Now let's move on to the add item to list command. This command comes in handy when you're when you intend on adding one item to an already populated list or you intend to add a whole host of items to an already populated list. Whatever you add to the list will end up at the bottom. So if you add one item, it will be the last item in that list if it's already populated. So you can find that again under data commands and when you drag the command into the scripting area you will get two areas. One is called the list to add to. This is the list you are trying to add the new information to. So let's say you can either type it in or you can create a new one. Whatever you want to do or you can drag it from under this area here if the list you're trying to populate is located there. So let's say we want to use this one. You drag it in and this is where the item you're trying to add to the already populated list will go. Let's say I wanted to add the word oranges to that list after it's been populated with the contents of the file that we added here in the add list to list command. This is the content of our file. So if we run the add item to list command, the word oranges, the item oranges will appear in this area right here. So let's put that aside for now. Let's move on to the clear list command. The clear list command is pretty straightforward. It does just as it sounds. It clears a list of all the contents within it. So when you drag the command into the scripting area, you specify what lists you would like to clear. You can either drop down and pick the list from there, or you can drag it in, or you can type it, whatever you want. And you click OK. And when you run the script, the list will be cleared of all the contents within it. There will be nothing left. So let's move on to the next 
list command, which is the set list position command. The set list position just allows you to set the position within a list. So you, again, here you would decide what list you're trying to work with. And by setting the position, you're basically telling the list to begin from that position. So this command goes with the next list item command. And it allows you to go through a list without having to worry about everything stopping once every item in the list has been gone through. So you drag it in. Usually, if you're using the next list item in a type text within a loop, you would put the list position, set list position command on top of the loop, outside of the loop, just to keep things stable. So this is basically how it's set up. Let's move on to the remove from list command which can be again located under the data commands. The remove from list command removes a specific item from a list. So again you drop down or you type it in or you drag it in whatever you want which list you're trying to work with and the way it finds the item is by using the position. So it would ask you to specify what position the item you want to remove is located. So let's say we want item 2 removed. If you click OK and you run this command, whatever item is in position 2 will be deleted. It will be removed from the list. So keep that in mind. So let's talk about some of the functions that you can use to interact with lists in Ubot Studio. The functions for interacting with lists are found under the variable functions. Most of the functions under that tab can interact with the add to list commands like add list to list, add item to list, with the exception of the functions that work with tables which are clearly specified under the variable functions. The table cell function, the table total rows, like those are there specifically to work with tables as you can already tell. You can sort items in a list with the sort list function. You can grab the common list items in a list and place those items in a different list by placing that function in an add list to list command. So there's a sort list item command returns the original list sorted in ascending or descending order. You get to choose that. And common list items which returns a new list containing the common items between the first and the second lists. So you're going to be comparing two lists with this function. For now, we want to focus on the list from file function, which allows you to grab a list from your desktop and place the contents of the file into a list. To use the list from file function, you would need to drag in the add list to list command. And I, we've already done that here. As you can see, we have an add list to list command. And we want to populate this list with the contents of this file. And here's the file path. And if you click edit, within the list from file function there's a browse button and when you click it you can find the file you want in your computer and choose it and then click OK and that is where the contents of this list will come from so that's already set up and ready to go so when you run your script the contents of this file that we specified here will be within that list. So after you've populated a list with the contents of a file, how do you get that information onto a page? So let's play with some of the functions that allow you to get the contents of that list into a page. So we have our playground page, we have our simple forms page, and we're going to fill this area here with some of the contents in the list we populated with the list from file command. So we already have a loop set up and we dragged in the list total function which it just returns the total number of the items in the list and in this case we're telling the loop to loop according to how many items are within the list we created here. And as you can see we can take a closer look and the list we're working with is list 1, which is the list we populated with the file. 
so click OK. That means the loop will only loop according to how many items are within the list we created here. We then drag this area into the loop and that brought up the type text command and as you can see that's pretty much how it's set up and in this area we inserted the variable function labeled next list item so that's already ready to go so we can delete this one and we can run the script and see what happens what should happen is that the area should be filled with each item from the list and it should stop once it runs out so here are the this is the contents of the list it is a list of fruits it has about one two three four five six items that means that the loop will loop about six times and it should fill this area with each item within the list. So let's look at our script. So we expect the list to be cleared in case there it's already populated with items. We expect the list labeled list1 to be populated with the contents from this file which is seen here and we expect to loop through the list items according to how many items are within the list labeled list 1 and we want to fill this area with each item within the list let's drag in a set list position to make sure everything's stable that is located under the data commands we're telling it to start at 0 the list we're working with is list 1 you can scroll down here and find it that way. The position is zero, so always start from zero. So let us run our script to see what happens. Notice that each item in the list is being placed into the area here until it gets to the end. So we see apples, we see bananas, pears, kumquats, plums, and guavas, and it ended on guavas. That is what the next list item command does. So let's say we want to fill the area with just a list item. So let's remove the next list item function and let's replace it with the list item function. With a list item function, you would need to of course specify which list you're going to be working with and we're going to be working with list 1 that is the list we're going to be working with again you can type it in or drag it in whatever you want and we are going to fill this field here with the list item in position 3 so when you click OK let's remove it from the loop because we don't really need to fill the field with the same item over and over according to how many items are in the list. So let's remove the loop command because we won't be needing that anymore. So let's run our script and let's see what happens. First of all, what is the item in position 3? Position 3, 0, 1, 2, 3 should be kumquats. So when we run the script kumquats should be what is placed in this area right here. So let's run the script. This area should be filled with the list item labeled kumquats. So let's run our script and the area is filled with the list item kumquats. So that's what the list item does. It lets you choose specifically what item you would like to fill a an area with. And there are lots of ways to interact with items within your list. There is the random list item and this com this function will just fill a field with a random item from a specified list so you would just have to select the list you're working with and then it'll work from there. That's all it would need and it will just fill the specified field with a random item from whatever list you specify. There's also the previous list item which will just select the item that came that comes before whatever item you just fill the field with. 
So there are lots of ways to interact with the items you place inside a list. The add list to list commands and the add item to list commands with remove list item and all those commands that interact that allow you to create lists and interact with lists are a way to populate a list while the variable functions like next list item, random list item, previous list item, list item are just a way for you to utilize the information the way you need to. So I hope that you found this brief introduction to lists in UBOT Studio useful. As always, feel free to check out our script reference and let us know at support.ubotstudio.com if you have any questions about any of these processes. Take care and see you in the next tutorial.